writing books? It's something that I've always wanted to do. I've always enjoyed looking around other people's second-hand bookstores and uh, sort of a dream of mine that one day I would have one. So three years ago, um, we decided to go for it, my husband and I, and uh, we bought this business and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, what, uh, what makes uh, a book collectible or not, so, a good collectible or not so good a collectible? What, uh there are standard collectibles. Um, for instance, uh, people like to collect uh, Kennedy books and magazines, um, Marilyn Monroe books and magazines, that kind of thing. Uh, some people get a fixation on a, on a movie star and they collect everything about, say, Sophia Loren, that kind of thing. Um, the collectible itself has to be in good condition. People like them to be in good condition. Um, and they, they will spend any amount to get the stuff that they really like. Uh, how, do you, how do you get the majority of your, your stock? Some people bring them in to us. They've been clearing out an old house, maybe belonging to an aunt who's died or something. They find this stuff in the, in the basement and uh, they don't know what else to do with it, so they come to us hoping that it will be worth something. Sometimes we actually go out, my husband and I, we go out um, to flea markets and um, garage sales even, that kind of thing. And uh, everywhere. <laughs> You'd be surprised where you find this stuff. Uh, what was your first, the first kind of book? Uh, uh, was it matter you just bought the business first or you scouted our location? Or? Uh, we needed a business that was within our budget. <laughs> and this was advertised and we went along to see it and we really liked it because besides just having books it also had the uh, collectible magazines we have um, collectible old postcards as well and we thought the variety was rather nice so it was, it was an existing business before? it was yes okay, was mm -hmm. it uh, called second time? Second yes time second time around books yes it was on Young Street originally oh okay and you mm -hmm. just you've been at this location for three years? For, for about two years at this location yeah we were starting into your own business and with some maybe you can tell us some of the pitfalls or some you know I think it's probably a good idea to speak to someone who's already in the business um, we didn't do that <laughs> so we had to sort of learn as we went along um, but yes there are all sorts of pitfalls of course um, any, any, any horror stories or good stories <laughs> When you first take over a business like this, you want to be liked by all your customers. So you tend to buy everything that they bring in. <laughs> all of a sudden you find you're not selling anything, you're just buying and, and you're buying rubbish, really, just, just to be a nice guy. You know. um, that had to stop, yes, very soon you, you realize you've just got to be very, very selective, very careful about what you buy. What's the, uh, what's the most interesting thing you've come across or the, what you felt was the most collectible in the three years that you've been That you thought uh, was a real treasure yourself and I don't know if you've held on to it or... Um, let's see now. We had a, uh, I don't know if you know Patricia Cornwell, she's a um, mystery writer. Uh, a book of hers came in and I knew that it would be uh, not the run of the mill Patricia Cornwell because the name was written Patricia Daniels Cornwell. It was one of her earliest ones. Um, but I didn't have any way of knowing uh, its value. Luckily I have some friends who are dealers and, uh, and I phoned one of these. And he told me it was worth uh, quite a bit of money. I was quite excited because usually the books that come in here are worth about ten bucks. You know. This was several hundred. Is that right? Yeah. Um, is there, how, how, do you, how do you go about determining a value? Is there, is there like a book? You know, I know with used cars, you have like a black book. And you can That's say, right, okay, yes. Toyota, yes. X in the amount of dollars. Yes. Is, there, is there such a book? There are price guides, yes. We have several down here that we refer to occasionally. But of course, they go out of date very quickly. So it's, uh, it's always nice to be in contact with other dealers um, who have who been in the business a long time. So with used cars, there's such things like called a black book, where you can determine the value of uh, of a of a of a car. And is there mm -hmm. such a, such a thing with uh, used uh, used collectible books? Yes, we do have several price guides. Actually, we've got a few down here, such as this one. <coughs> this will give you the names of the authors and uh, and their more collectible books and you can look up the price right here. Of course they do go out of date very quickly so it's always best to check before you price a book. 
but do books do they do they generally tend to tend to go up in price or you know is there something that you know I don't know saying you know how in fashion some things are fashionable then they're not so fashionable is it that's right things do go in and out of fashion you're quite right um, but generally speaking they will increase in value um, especially if they're in really good condition and it's even better if they're signed Oh, okay, for example, does that, okay, if the author has signed it, that, That's makes, right. that makes for a more val valuable exactly. collection? Exactly, yes, it does, yes. It's always very exciting when you find a signed copy of something. What's the, what's the oldest book that you have in the store? The oldest book, um, we don't tend to have very many old books here, but I, I guess about 1888, something like that. Was that right? Mm -hmm. Uh, that was probably a Dickens, not a first edition, obviously, oh, okay. but uh, <laughs> just just a Dickens edition. Uh, do, what would something like that be? If it was in very good condition, um, it might be worth fifty dollars. They're not as worth as much as you think, the Dickens, because uh, there were so many of them. Oh, uh, so one thing I noticed in the story, you've got this uh, this wonderful life collection. Maybe you can mm -hmm. tell me about uh, tell me a little bit about it, and uh, you know basically how you got, you know got it started, mm -hmm. and you know some of your more interesting pieces in it. This was something that we really liked when we first bought the store and we've been increasing it ever since um, because people go for lifes in a big way. Not only do they like the famous um, people on the, on the covers like Joe DiMaggio or the Queen, uh, Marilyn Monroe or the Kennedys, but they like to buy them for birthday presents. For instance, um, if somebody had been born June the 10th, 1946, uh, this would be a, a wonderful present to give someone because they can flip through and see what was happening the day they were born, the week they were born. And we sell a lot for, for presents, for birthdays, anniversaries, things like that. Now is there anything for, that you have to do to preserve a book th th so that it doesn't actually decay over years? Because it is, it is a paper product. Is there, I noticed you've got, right. the you've got the plastic uh, uh, covers for the life, but is there anything mm -hmm. you can do, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, keep it in a cold room or something like that? I don't know. What it should be kept out of a damp place, definitely. Damp just ruins anything, uh, ruins magazines, books, uh, anything to do with paper.